Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I've got my mouse from home with me today. This is a Logitech M705, otherwise known as the Marathon Mouse. And I've had this guy for years. Um, and it's pretty well worn, to be honest. The Logitech logo is gone from it. You can very faintly see that. And it's got all of my little fingernail marks on it where I hold on to it and stuff. Anyway, the reason why I've got this in the shop today is that the right click on it, it seems to be going. Uh, when I'm playing, it's it, it's generally okay, but like when I, if I'm playing Overwatch or something like that, it's a game that requires me to hold down the right click to hold up shields and things like that. Um, it gets finicky. It just start, you know, you hold you're holding up your shield as Reinhardt, and just suddenly you just go, and it's very frustrating. So what I thought I'd do is try and replace the mouse buttons. Now, I've never tried doing this in a mouse before. Um, uh, these things, uh, I've done uh, laptop mouse buttons before, um, and those, I'm just going to start taking this apart while I talk, um, and laptop bu uh, mouse buttons are tactile switches. Um, do I have any on the counter in front of me by any chance? I don't think I do. Uh, they're tactile switches that are just very little flat bump buttons that just go click, and same kind of thing that you see as computer power buttons and that kind of thing. Um, however, uh, these ones, and you'll notice that the screw holes are exposed because I've actually had this thing apart just to check what kind of switches it has in it. Um, it has these kinds of switches, and these are little micro switches that you find in mice, and uh, they, they're just the, they're these little blocks, and they've just got a little switch on top that just goes clicker clicker. And again, they're tactile. Let me give you some ASMR. There you go. Some mouse button ASMR for you there. Um, so, yeah. Basically, we're going to desolder a couple of them from in there and put some new ones in. That's it. That's the video. Let's get this thing open again. So, the Marathon mouse is, as you can see, it's a wireless mouse. And one of the things I like about this one is the reason why it has its name is that it has a extraordinarily long battery life. Uh, it runs two AA batteries in parallel. Um, and this thing will literally run for at least a year on a single set of batteries, in my experience. As long as you put in, um, as long as you put in Duracells or some other decent brand cells, um, you will you will get just literally a year out of them. And it's the best wireless mouse I've ever owned. So have we got yeah, there were screws under the skates. So those come out. I was thinking of just buying a new mouse, but then I was like, oh, I kind of want to make a video on this. So, because the problem is just, uh, I don't know, there aren't, I like this mouse. I get on well with it. There we go, that opens up like that. And there's a little fly lead there that goes up to these side buttons. So, I'm just going to disconnect that guy. There we go. So, now we've got the two halves of the mouse. So, uh, the top shell of the mouse, is, as said, has got the backwards and forwards button board in it. And those are, those feel like tactile buttons to me. I think those will be tactile buttons. Um, and likewise, the mouse wheel button, let me give you a close up of some of this. The mouse wheel's middle click there, that's a tactile button. And the left and right one, so if I rock the wheel left and right, that's these two guys here and one on the other side there. Those are, I think those are tactile buttons. They're kind of similar. I don't know. Anyway, well, yeah, that's that. Make of that what you will. And then uh, we've got the optical sensor down there. So uh, if the thing wasn't tracking very well, you'd want to take that guy out and clean it, which I've done before in the past. Uh, and that's about it. There's another little tactile button down there for the, um, uh, there's actually an, another button there on this mouse. Uh, which um, it seems like a really cool idea because it's on just on your on your left thumb there, but I just don't find it particularly useful. I don't know why. My uh, I've always got my thumb on the backwards and forwards buttons, and I just find I just don't find it very intuitive to press down on the bottom of the mouse there. If there's a if there was an actual button there, I might, but because you just kind of press on the side of the mouse, it doesn't feel very intuitive to me. So yeah, that's a shame. Anyway, here's the actual mouse buttons that we're replacing. These ones are. Omron brand, which I believe are pretty good, but this mouse is like this mouse is probably about seven, seven, six or seven years old, you know, so it's just worn out. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take the board out of this and we're gonna see what it takes to actually desolder those. Now, normally, 
If I was off camera, I would probably just hot air them off the board. However, because I want to try and make this video accessible, I'm going to try and do it with my soldering iron first, just to see if it's actually possible to do this without specialist tools, for those of you playing along at home. Um, however, ultimately, you know, hot air would make this a lot easier, because hot air makes everything easier. Not sure what's holding that board in. Does that just lift out? It doesn't want to come out. Oh, I see. There's a screw there and there. How do we remove the, the middle click assembly? I think we have to take apart... Oh, do we have to take apart the free wheel mechanism? That's going to make me sad. Unless... Can I just get down there and just remove those and lift the whole thing out? I think I can. That hasn't gotten me very far. There's no hidden... No, there's nothing hidden under there. This is harder to disassemble than I expected. I'm going to take out the optical sensor and just start taking things out of the mouse. Am I going to have to take the mouse wheel apart piece by piece? I really don't want to do that. I think I'm going to have to, though. All right. Okay, so that's the button for the freewheel mechanism. Ah, I've seen it. I've seen the screws that are holding us in. They're down there. You guys could probably see that on the camera already. I couldn't see it from the angle I was at. Okay, can I get a screwdriver in there? Can I get this white piece out? No. Okay, can I... Can I slip a double O Phillips down there? Oh, just about. This doesn't feel like the correct way of doing it, though. What I'm banking on is that once I've got this apart... I'll be able to disassemble it further to make it easier to reassemble. Did that really not lift up? I don't like how this is coming apart at all, but... Unless... Does that retaining pin come out somehow? I think that comes out of there. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, we got it. Okay, there we go. Now we've removed the wheel. There we go. Okay. Now we can just go straight in there. Take out those screws. I wonder what that is doing. That looks like it's at the bottom of the uh, freewheel actuator potentially. However, to my knowledge, uh, unless the mouse can detect when it's in freewheel mode, I wasn't aware of that. Interesting. I'm drifting off shot again. Oh well. That board is now ready to come out. Uh, with a little bit of in encouragement. Do I need to take that out as well? I think I can get away without doing that. Whoa. Those two little springs nearly lost those. Right, let's do a test on one of these and see what it's going to take to remove that. Uh, I'm going to go in with my uh, TS100 today, which is my precision soldering iron. You probably don't need it for this job, but I'm going to use it for good measure um, just to make my life a little bit easier. I think a standard soldering iron will get onto this quite easily, but um, my standard soldering iron is pretty bad. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is just heat up these three solder spots in turn and step the micro switch out. Um, and I'm going to... I've got something on my iron there that's burning off. 
and I'm going to put some tweezers in the switch so I can get some leverage under there. Okay, let's try that. Am I going to need to wet the solder joints as well? Yeah, I'm going to put some fresh solder just to wet the joints. So, putting the fresh solder on there just makes the existing factory solder flow a little easier. It will just make it easier to just reflow and get everything moving. Alright, here we go. Let me bring you guys in a little closer. Okay, I have rearranged into the vise, so now all I have to do is just pull up on the circuit board. I'm going to tighten that. It's quite hard to get it into the vise just because of other things that are obstructing it though. This might take more than one attempt. As you can see, I'm just bouncing back and forth. There goes one. There we go. All right. We'll need to clean up that hole, but we can do that in a minute. What on earth is going on with this guy? Did I just damage that? Oh, yeah, I just pulled it out slightly from the heat. Yeah, that's fine. These things are single use anyway. Who cares? Oh, I pressed the switch in and it didn't click back out again. That thing's now turbo dead. I'm very, very much committed to doing this now. Okay, let's repeat the process for the other one. This one's a bit easier to vice up, so we should have an easier time. And once again, I'm just going to wet the joints with some fresh leaded solder to make them easier to flow. And then I can do my same stepping technique. To be honest, I think it's better not doing this with hot air. Just because there's so much else around these components, it would be difficult not to damage anything. There we go. No Wario's. <clears throat> that one came out a little bit cleaner. And it still works. You could probably reuse that, but for the record, my replacement switches, uh, these were a couple of quid on eBay. The ones I've bought are, uh, are Boy, whatever that brand is. They're that brand. B O Y U E. Don't know. I think Omron are a fancy brand that get used in all the fancy gaming mice, but. If it lasts another three years instead of another ten years, then I don't care. That's good enough for me. Fine. Right. Let's uh, tidy up the holes and we can put some nice new switches in. So I'm going to grab some wick and I'm just going to wick down these holes just to pull out all the old solder. You know, I probably should have detached this from the body of the mouse. This is getting awkward to work around this thing now. And if you're having to steer around parts of the device you're working on, then you're doing it wrong. You should be working on your terms, not the devices. That's not moving at all. Come on. I'm not very good at wicking. I'm kind of tempted to invest in one of those um, solder sucker pump things. Like, not the manual ones, but like the, the vacuum the desoldering gun I've seen people using those on holes like this and they make it look so easy and I'm like oh that looks nice to be honest I think I've had most of the solder out of there I don't think I need to clear these holes they're so large and there's only three of them that it won't really matter god this board soaks up a lot of heat for considering its size and complexity or lack thereof. I think I'm just making a bit of a hash of this, to be honest, but whatever. It's Saturday, and I'm fixing a grotty old mouse for myself. Who cares? So the board has actually marked which way round uh, the buttons go. As you can see, we've got a line denoting which way round they go, which is nice of them. So 
I'm going to put this guy on there. And I've kind of got, because I didn't clear those holes, I've kind of got to hold it in place and then just reheat the holes from the other side of the board to get it through. This is why it's nicer when you can clear holes because you don't have to do this. Sometimes it's a nightmare, sometimes it's not too bad. Oh, it started off well and then it all went wrong. Yeah, I jumped out the holes, that's why. No, those don't want to go. I've got to clear those holes better. You know what? Let's do what I should have done from the start and get rid of the bloody bottom of the mouse. That is not working. Oh my word, look at how much hassle this is. Oh, I regret everything. I regret my Saturday. I could have just bought a new mouse. I could have just bought a nice new mouse. And I was like, no, I'm going to fix my one. It'll make a good YouTube video. There we go. Right, now I've got the board separated out on its own. I'll have a bit of an easier time clearing the holes. I'm going to put a bit of flux on there to add drama and just give myself a little bit of help to get the old lead-free solder to float. And let's go again. All right, I can't get those last two holes to clear because I suck. However, we've got a good enough indent that I should now just be able to feed them in. So three holes lined up. There we go. That was terrible and awful and I'm ashamed, but it's on. This was trickier than I expected it to be, but it's okay. How about that one? All the holes are clear on this one, so I can just plug that straight in. And we'll just make sure that's down as low as it can go. Yeah, and I'm going to solder one hole. Then I'm gonna reflow while I hold the component down. And then just flow the other holes. There we go. That's flat. What a fiasco. All right, let's get some alcohol on the board to clean it up. And we'll reassemble this thing. I just drowned the whole board there just so I can just clean off any other schmutz that's on the on there, you know, like in the switches, because you know, dust and other stuff will just accumulate inside a mouse. So we'll just give the whole thing a good scrub. I'm testing a new light in this video, a new light for my bench, which is a one of my custom-made LED jobs. And it's nice, it's putting a lot of light down onto the bench, but it's casting a shadow from the camera, which is frustrating, which is why there's a shadow here, and it's really winding me up. I know what I'm gonna do about it, but yeah, another time. I wonder if I can replace that middle click switch as well. Did I have any Did I have any surface mount tack switches? Ah. There's my tactile switches. I might go on there. That's a tactile switch with the top bit removed. I'm going to try disassembling a spare one to see if I can replicate that.
There we go. Now we have a new tactile switch for our middle click as well. So as you can see, all they've got is a tactile switch where they've removed the top cover to reduce the footprint of it, the vertical height of it a bit. Is that the correct dimensions as well? Uh, where are my calipers? That guy's approximately four and a half mil across. I think my one's going to be bigger than that. Well, my one's a shade bigger, but I think it'll fit in. I think we can make that work. I'm just going to do this just for the just because I can. I'm not going to be heartbroken if I've killed this mouse. It's going to be a good experiment. Like this mouse probably wasn't really worth fixing, but if you've got a really fancy uh, Corsair or something that you paid like, I don't know, 120 odd quid for because that's how much Corsair stuff costs these days then, you know, maybe you can rejuvenate it. Whoop. There we go. Again, removing without hot air just to show you that you don't necessarily need hot air. It's going closer because you guys haven't been able to see what I'm doing. Just gonna touch up those pads with some fresh solder. Just a little bit oversized, this replacement dude, but I think it'll work. Nah, it's off center. Oh, it's too big. I may have cocked up. I probably should have quit while I was ahead. I'm going to try and trim the legs down on this slightly. Sorry about the weird camera angle, but I'm trying to dodge the shadow of the camera. I think we'll continuity test that. <laughs> Not sure it was a good idea to try and replace that switch. I think that was a bad idea, but I think I've managed to get away with it. Okay, so if my memory serves me, tactile switches go diagonal when actuated yeah there's only one way to find out I think it worked it's got a nice big firm clunk to it so when I middle click now I should get a nice big kadunk on my uh, mouse wheel All right Let's put it back together again. And uh, yeah, um, hmm, hmm. 
I may have uh, may have gotten a little bit adventurous in this project, but hopefully it's an entertaining video. Okay, let's get this thing put back together. So I've got to reattach this bottom bit now. Um, which way? That so that goes in like that. So that goes in like that. Okay. Oh, that had to go in. Eh, like that maybe. Yeah, that looks right. Ugh, I hate it when this happens. I stepped away and I just had lunch and watched a couple of YouTube videos. That's all. And I've completely forgotten how this thing was assembled already. Oh, I remember. That goes there. So far, so good. Right. The wheel assembly needs to go on top. Can I clean that any further? Just for... Because I can. Not easily. I could spray some brake cleaner through that. I might just try that. I may also regret it, but I'm just going to get some car brake cleaner um, and just squirt that through there just so it flushes through. That was very successful. So I just got some ordinary brake and clutch cleaner. I don't normally use this stuff with computers. I just happen to have it kicking about because I'm working on my car today as well. Um, and it's, I probably could have done the same thing with the alcohol, but um, the brake and clutch cleaner, is a, it's got a propellant in it and it fizzes a bit more. So it's good for getting into areas. And just like with alcohol, it evaporates afterwards, leaving no residue behind. So I squirted a bit in there and just went, just so it came out the other side. Then I used my air compressor um, just to blow everything through and cycle all the fumes and the residue out. And now we've got a nice clean wheel assembly. So now that needs to sit on there. Before that goes in, we've got to put in these two tiny little springs. And I didn't point these out when I don't think I put, drew enough attention to these when I was taking this apart. Watch out for these springs because yeah, you lose those, then you're going to have a bad time. Your middle click won't have any bounce back on it. The tactile switch itself will lift it up, but it'll be really annoying. It'll make it feel horrid. So don't lose those springs. I'll put that in there. And I think that should just drop into place somehow. I'm not sure how. Oh, I just seem to have done it somehow. Yeah. Cool. That's got a really heavy clunk on it now. Which is not ideal. You know, you don't want too much... You don't want too heavy a click on something. Otherwise, it, it wears out your fingers. But, eh, it's better than it was. It may loosen up with a few clicks as well. Right, then this little holding bar, that went in there and stopped that assembly from coming out. There we go. Now this thing has to go on top. And once this thing is on, we should find that the free will mechanism is operational. There we go. So now with the free will mechanism off, we have clicks. And you can see that little spring mechanism in there just jumps along. And then if I click the free wheel mechanism, we can now free wheel. Cool. It, this is one of the party tricks of Logitech mice that I love. Having that free wheel is just awesome because you're just browsing around the internet. You're at the bottom of a really long page. You literally just go, the free wheel button is just behind the mouse wheel and you just go click, bang. And it just goes zoop, up to the top of the page. It's such a neat trick. And then when you're in a game and you want distinctive clicks, you just go ba-dunk, and now you have a nice solid clunk between each step of the wheel. Really nice feature on Logitech mice. I don't know if anyone else has ripped off that design. If it's not patented, they should have. <laughs> 
because it's a really good idea. Uh, right, where's my laser sensor? This is clean and I'm going to leave it alone because um, uh, when the first time I took this apart just to do the recce on it, um, when I put it back together again, it didn't track very well. And I actually had to take it apart a second time uh, just to clean up the lens and stuff and then it came good. So watch out for that. Personally, um, if you don't have to take the lens out, then I wouldn't, uh, the sensor rather. You won't, I don't think you'll damage it or anything, but yeah, just, I don't think it was necessary to remove that. Just a thought. All right, what have we got left? We're running out of bits. I think we're ready to put the top case on. And the true test of this thing will be, oh, I think that one goes at the back. The true test of this thing will be uh, when I play some more Overwatch at some point this weekend. And we'll see if I can actually play as Ash now, because previously I basically couldn't play Ash because I can't hold down my right click properly. It's very frustrating. I wonder if me talking about Overwatch will make me more popular with the kids. Oh, those switches feel really nice. They feel really, well, new. Oof. That middle click is much too heavy. Yeah, replacing the middle click was a mistake. That is really, a really, really heavy middle click now. Do not recommend, but... Ugh. Hopefully that will wear in a bit after some use. Luckily, I don't think I'm that dependent on my middle click. I don't think I do a lot that really... Like, whenever a game requires me to middle click often, I will immediately reassign that somewhere else, just because middle clicking isn't very comfortable, I don't think, because it's on a on the, on the wheel anyway. I'll just reassign that to one of the side buttons. But yeah, the mil middle click was a mistake. The rest of it, that feels really good. Let's just double check that it actually works. Let's plug this in. Right, and left clicks, looks good. Right clicks, look good, DIFM, scrolling works fine, free will works fine, good. I, I don't know how to test the middle click, um, there we go, yep the middle click works as well because I can click and go into mouse coast mode, good. Right, well thank you very much for watching everyone, that was a journey, so uh, yeah, the left and the right click, that feels amazing. The middle click, should have left that one alone. It wasn't causing me problems. I just thought I would try it while I was there. But hey, you know, if your middle click is actually goosed, you've seen how to fix that as well. I took an ordinary tactile switch, I de-lidded it, and then it fitted in there. I had to trim the legs down a bit as well, but eh, whatever. Hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.